the basketball department and maybe one yeah, little yeah, bit. Arnor, the loan of course, click it. Hello, thank you. And thank you, Fjölnir. Great presentation. It's kind of difficult to come after Fjölnir with sick of paint tins and everything, so <laughs> I don't know where to start. Uh, and it's interesting to be called the chairman of Valor. Uh, as a matter of fact, we don't really hold meetings. Uh, the rule is pretty much, please call me if you're going to do something stupid, and, and otherwise it pretty much runs itself. Uh, I thought, I think I was the first guy that was teaching sports psychology at Iceland, or second or third. So when Havron sent me a message a few weeks back, and I said, finally, somebody got recognized here, the old stuff, and then she asked me to talk about Valor, and I, for a long time, didn't answer because I thought she was joking. <laughs> And, but here I am, I never thought I would ever, nobody would ever ask me to talk about water. What about in a university? I've been here a number of times talking about business stuff. So myself, I've been, I've been I come from the corporate side and I, I look at this project of water as a more of a strategy thing than a sports thing. And, and I'm struggling with the question, what is the success in sports? Is it number of titles, or is it number of kids, or is it number of something? So I, I don't really have an answer, but I'm going to tell you the story that we've been, or the, the process that we've been going through since the past 15 years. And if you can take some points, that's great. If not, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we're not, I'm not going to talk anything about finance here. Uh, that will be a different lecture in the business school in, in a few weeks. And it's not going to be any individuals or, or coaches or players. And this is, this is my experience. And I, I was born and raised at Valor. At the age of four, my, my parents found out that they could save off of daycare by throwing me at Valor and keeping me there for the day. And so I've been there ever since. And the plan is to, there are no Sega Pentes videos, but the story of Valor and Valor basketball and, and some of the failures and, and success. And to begin with, like in any strategy, just to know the background, Valor is a, founded in 1911. Uh, on the other side of Eskilid. This is the picture I took back in the days uh, uh, with my building, so it's a little changes, but it's a, it has a long history, and the basketball has been there for 50 years plus. Uh, in 1883, there was a, had a good team and a great success. Uh, but, and, and, and the 92 again, and, and, and I was happily a part of the team, but ever since, Success, if you measure that on a number of titles, the success has been limited. Uh, but Vala has a long history, and it's a long history of, of handball and, and, and football. And I've often said that I think the handball division at Vala is the best organized and, uh, division in the, in the nation. I don't know if it's true, but they, they like it when I say it, and they give me more hours in the gym. <laughs> uh, but they have a long history of winning, and it seems to me that they win every time. And, and so it's hard to compete against them, but basketball has been the small child, has been the lost boy or the lost girl in the, in the, in the club for a long period of time. And we try to change that. And today, uh, in 2019, we won five major titles in, in men and women, three for women and two for men. And kids or participants are 325. I saw Gunni here, so he's, uh, these are rounded numbers. Well, okay. Uh, with 42% uh, girls and 58% boys, and we have 18 kids in the youth program, and around six, seven, eight national team players for the, for the national team. So this is the story for the past five years. Uh, this is the, the orange line is the, is the women line in the top of the league. And the gray line is the, is the second division, and the yellow line is where the men's team has to reach to go to the playoffs. And the blue line is the men's team. And this is the past five years. Uh, in 2009, this was the situation. Uh, last major title was in 83, four years ago. Uh, the women team 
just arrived to Valor in 2007. They were thrown out of the club in 1999 during a great day of, of June uh, for some reason. Like we've seen in, in different clubs, and there were 96 kids. There were two in the national young team programs and non-national team players since 92. So this, this is the situation when a few of us uh, decided we need to change this. This is a phrase that we heard all the time, especially from the damn handball side. <laughs> and, and this again is the past five years, and before that this is the past 15 years. Uh, so what we did, our strategy, so to say, and we look at this as a hobby. It's not a work, it's a hobby. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, something that we do. I, I call it the, my mental pills. Instead of taking a lot of sleeping pills and, and, and pills to keep you happy if you go to Val or any sports club, it's gonna, it's gonna cheer you up. And the women's team joined the club in 2007 uh, when they laid down a different club at, at ES, and we took that team over. And this is actually, I was moving three years ago, and I found some documents, and this is the strategy from 2008 in August, when I met the, it probably called CEO of Valor at that time, and he had the great idea of, of locking down the basketball division, uh, because we didn't have time in the, in the, in the gyms, and, and, the, uh, and the work there was not uh, up to speed. And, and this is made up pretty much from that meeting, but the key was to, to do this in three steps, gradually and slowly. At that time, people wanted success, meaning one titles in, in a couple of years or three years. And the plan was to start with the youngsters at the age of 2000 back then, uh, 2000, 2001. Some of the youngster flocks were, we didn't have enough number of, of kids. So instead of starting to try to do well, I think at the same time we started with the younger kids. To try to find coaches, for these kids and, and, and have a group of 10, 15, 20 kids of each age group. So that was the start, and the plan was to get it up to 300 by the year 2020, uh, gradually, and 40% girls at that time. I think there were like 10 girls at the time in the, in the basketball club. And the goal was to, uh, for a reason that we go, can go into deeper, uh, that in the 2015, we would have a women team that would compete against the best. So the best being top, one of the top four, and the men's team later in 2020. And respect within Valor, because of, of both time and, and, and financial side, uh, that was an important step. And this is the, actually the, the <laughs> strategy sheet that was pressed forward at the time. <laughs> and, and there's a phrase there, Lietter in Lund, which is, Every, on every meeting, there's a, somewhere in the corner we, I put Lietter Lund, because it's supposed to be fun. And the first step was to build an infrastructure uh, to make this happening, uh, to start with the youngster kids. Again, uh, if you try to uh, get kids of 8 to 15 or 16 into, this, into, the, into the club, uh, it'll be great. But to bring kids up from age of 5, 6, 7, 8, and grow them within the club was the plan that at least uh, we did. Uh, there was an, this is the graph since uh, 2008. Gradually up to like 320 kids right now. And the biggest challenge for at least Valor now is, is space in the gyms, which is, uh, if you take uh, probably Reykjavik and the whole Iceland, the, the most unused buildings are gyms and churches. Uh, they're used for a couple hours per week at these churches, but there are tons of gyms in, in Reykjavik that are unused for some reason. Uh, there was another strategy that we pressed forward, and this is a meeting with Gusti back in 2009, or 10, 10 probably, that uh, on Valor birthday in 2011, we want to have a, a children's tournament. A bunch of uh, clubs have a great tournaments, and I thought it was important to have a uh, that we would show everybody that we were, could represent basketball. And the plan was in, in 2011 have up to 150 kids. And I remember Gusti saying, you are putting the bar too, too low. I need 500. And the, th the thinking was that if we would go 500, we would probably never do it again because we didn't have the manpower and the infrastructure to do this. So we started like 150 kids. But the plan was up to 200, 
in 2020 up to 1,000 kids. And at Gusti, I guess he was not a good mood that day, so I was trying to cheer him up and come on so I could rug. And in 2020, we had 1,107 kids in this tournament. And to do that, you need a big infrastructure like all of you guys know, especially Fjöllir. And you don't do that if you have a division of 96 kids. So I think this is something that at least we are very proud of. And of course, the important step was to hire good coaches. Uh, and again, we have a question, where is a good coach? Um, I have heard a lot of teams saying we need to put the best coaches for the youngsters. Uh, I think we have uh, best coaches for the youngsters. I don't know if they're the best coaches for, for the adults, but I think they're, for most part, they're best coaches for the youngsters. And there's another phrase that I've pressed forward the whole, in this whole journey is equality. Um, and I've said this in organization, that e equality is a choice. It's not something that happens. It's not something that we accidentally see. It's a choice. And, and that was something that I started pressing in, in Valor at that time and among other people. And uh, I think at least we have uh, somewhere reached that goal on the line. We can go into that deeper later. And again, it was a challenge because we didn't have the girls clubs or, or girls, girls uh, ages. And, and we didn't increase the number of, of gyms, so we have to uh, especially negotiate with the handball of, of moving around with the, with the gym site. But I think that's a, that was the most important step, to have volunteers, to have parents and kids growing up within Valor. And now we're seeing these kids uh, be in the age of 22, 21, 20. Some of them are still playing, but most of them are still involved with the, with the, with the club. And the second, thing, the second step was to take the women's team for a number of reasons. Uh, we had a better foundation for the women's team. And also, there was, I thought it was important for the to get a recognition in, within the club, to have them a, as a, uh, one of the better teams in Iceland. Uh, so, and in 2019, uh, we won the first title for women's team. And, and I was very happy we did some things along the way. One of them, we represented Krabbamisfela, uh, or the Cancer Association. I think we were the first team to wear a pink uniform in the, no in the month of October. And we collected up to 4.2 million for the Cancer Association uh, and got a good recognition for that. And talking about culture, which is big, I thought it was an important step for, for Valor to be part of that. And last year or the year before, we collected money uh, 4.1 million for PIETA, which is the Association for Suicides, and I thought it was really important. And I can see that uh, from, the, uh, from the other side, that it was a, a great PR stunt that a club like Valor uh, would help uh, those in need. And by bringing these, uh, those, those are the, the boys are back in town, this is from the Cup Final Women's in, in 2019. Those are the kids that we started out with of the age of, of born 2001, 2000, and one younger. Most of them are still around the club for some reason. And, and, and the 2019 teen women's team, this is a picture, at least for me and Valor, is, is one of the uh, most, or the greatest moment in the history of Valor from 1911, that the men hand, uh, women handball and women basketball team won all the titles uh, that year, and the basketball team for the first time and the Valor basketball team was uh, team of the year uh, that year, the first time that was uh, published. Uh, didn't lose a game for 13 months. A great team, and that was for Valor at least, or, or me and uh, the guys that are uh, behind the scenes, uh, a great accomplishment. But uh, because I, I had <laughs> I'm reading too much psychology, uh, it's important that you don't get tired of, of good things because like wonderful things seems to, for some reason, not be wonderful for a long time. Uh, and then the third step was to have a boys team or a men's team. Uh, finally, that would be uh, follow their women's journey and be one of the top four teams within Iceland. Um, and again, it's hard to measure how, how, to, how to measure success in sports club, but at least for us, uh, the last year, 
uh, to have this event uh, at Valor, uh, which was the, uh, I can't say the number, but plus 3,000 people in the building of that holds 1,800 people. <laughs> uh, we're close to the fire department here, so don't go any further with that. Uh, and a lot of the engineers around the, that make the bleachers were panicking at that time. Um, but there was like 250 volunteers working, uh, double the size of the division in, in 15 years. And this was the highest rated uh, television for individual sports last year of, from Stuttgart of 92,000 people. Uh, so we were extremely proud about that. And seeing uh, coming from 15 years of, of very small number of people uh, to this event was a a great achievement for us, at least. And, and then, a few years back, we won the cup. And I show this picture because this is all about being part of this. Uh, if you see this guy, he uses the helmet because he's working during the games. It's not, it's not a protection, he's working. He plays the drum and he's a worker. And if you see the... Uh, Excitement in his eyes, uh, and in '83 I was uh, I was a little older than him, and I remember when Valor won their last title in in the same building. Uh, and it was pretty much the same excitement that I saw. And again, what is success? Uh, because I come from the uh, corporate side, this is the index of happiness for for corporates, it's different different organizations, and it's been the same list pretty much for the past uh, 24 years with Costco Benzin, by far <laughs> the highest one. Um, and then different companies, and this is happiness, and this is trig, uh, or trust, on companies. And this is what they may mean when they talk about Aunaivoyen, or the index of, of satisfaction. Last year, I did a study at Valor on this NPS scale, which is a 10-point scale. Either if you, if you, if you, there's a one question, if you, uh, if you say nine or 10, uh, you praise the company or say, I would recognize this company as a good company or a club. And if you say six or low, it's a negative score. And I'm, I tested out for Valor with the parents of a, of a kid. What is the uh, happiness with Valor? And, and what it comes out is, is 90 for the basketball department. And I thought again, because one of the strategic goals that we had is that people were happy with the service that we're providing and at least compared to the company in the, in the nation, we're relatively high. So that means like 85% are saying, given on a 10 point scale, nine or 10, uh, for the, how well we're reaching the goals. To end with, we are, we are not a lot into structure and, and, and meetings. Uh, we never hold a crisis meeting. Uh, uh, we're not a lot into firing people. I've said the coaches, they need to let me know at least with 12 months ahead if they're gonna quit. Uh, because uh, I don't believe in, in, in firing a lot of people, and we are big into culture. That was, was a great lecture here before, and I would recommend that everybody uh, look in that in details. So to sum this up, uh, I think our biggest challenge now is to find people to replace me and, and people like me. If I take a board members from basketball, handball, and, and, and football divisions in Iceland. The average age is, a, is plus 60, so I'm younger than average in that group. Uh, so we need people to, to fill up the spots. Um, and, and in culture, uh, at least I say in my company, the core issue is to treat people like people. It's a slow process. And the general rules of, of human behavior are general, and they work in sports club. And I think this issue, again, for all of us in here, to find people, volunteers, to be able to uh, run great sports like clubs like Fjölnir or Valur or Stjarnan or whatever, is the greatest challenge that we have. Because what I found out, it's, it's, it's relatively, relatively easy to, to find coaches. Uh, you can find them in Iceland or you can find them elsewhere. You can find players, but to find volunteers is, seems to be very difficult. And, and we need to praise these people. 
Again, to sum up, uh, we increased the number from 94 or 95 to 325 <coughs> or 6. Uh, I think that's just class. Uh, we have been recognized in the past few years to, to win some titles, and the NPS score is plus 90, uh, which means a lot to me uh, that, that people appreciate, because the main goal is to uh, build a healthy environment for, for girls and boys to play sports and basketball. Uh, which I believe is the mother of all sports. So uh, I think by having a score around 90, it proves at least that uh, we are doing something right. So thank you. Thank you guys for listening and have a great day, right? Thank you.